Hi learners and dear students, good morning to you all. I am Professor S. Kripanidhi, heading the Department of Biotechnology at Vignans Foundation for Science, Technology and Research, Andhra Pradesh, India, doing immunoinformatics. Talks as per the topics given in our syllabus. Now we are doing Unit 2, Topic 2, Types of Immunoglobulins and their Diversity. In Topic 1, we have seen the structure of immunoglobulin and function of immunoglobulin. So that is uh, the nobular topic that is Porter and Edelman. Porter and Edelman, they proposed the Y-shaped structure. In detail we have seen the light chain, heavy chain and light chain marker weight, heavy chain marker weight, light chain is 25,000, heavy chain is 50,000, okay, light chain is having 212 amino acids, heavy chain is having 450 amino acids, light chain is having fab region, heavy chain is having CH3 region, okay, fab region is the one that binds to the antigen, okay, fab region is having hypervariable region called complementarity determining regions, okay, so the structure is reduced by papaya and pepsin that partial proteolysis, uh, Porter and Edelman, Porter and Edelman employed partial proteolysis and reduced the Y-shaped structure with the, purpose, uh, the pepsin and papaya and several other things we have seen in the previous uh, lecture. Now we see the types of immunoglobulins. A little bit mention of the types of immunoglobulins also we have given in previous lecture, previous topic. Now we see the details, objectives. To understand the isotypes and subtypes of immunoglobulin. Isotypes. Isotypes means that is uh, in Ig, gamma, delta, alpha, mu, epsilon, like that. Okay. To evaluate the function of isotypes of immunoglobulin. See, each immunoglobulin is having a specific function. Otherwise, there is no need to have five different uh, isotypes with us. Okay. To appreciate the diversity among immunoglobulins. How if I get infected with dengue virus, if I get infected with COVID virus, if I get infected with Ebola virus, my immunoglobulins are different. How is that our system is having to make different immunoglobulins for different infections? Different infections, okay. So that's what the diversity of immunoglobulins. So the immunoglobulin, the potential that you're having to make immunoglobulins are bewildering, numerous, numerous, okay. So that's what the immunoinformatic tools need to be used. So the outcomes of this topic are the five isotypes and nine subtypes of immunoglobulins will be familiarized in this. The structure and function of each of the isotypes will be known. The diversity of immunoglobulins due to VJ that is variable and joining and VDJ that is variable diversity and joining the combination will be appreciated. So, this one, the last one was done by another Nobel laureate called Susumu Tunigawa. Susumu Tunigawa, Japanese person, he was there in MIT in USA and he has done this work, basically computation based work. Okay, v, VJ, variable joining, variable diversity in joining regions. So, therapeutic antibodies, let us see the animated video on this therapeutic antibodies. Okay. Antibodies are made of several different peptide chains, bound together in a Y shape. An antibody is made of two identical immunoglobulin heavy chains and two identical immunoglobulin light chains. Roughly speaking, the structural features of an antibody can be split into two parts. The domains that recognize a target, known as the variable region, and the domains that determine the antibody's biological function, known as the constant region. The heavy chain constant region of an antibody determines where in the body the antibodies are located, what kind of immunological response an antibody is able to mediate, and what the oligomeric state of the antibody is. Carbohydrate chains are attached to the heavy chain constant region and sit between the two heavy chains. They are associated with stability and effector function of the antibody. Heavy chain constant regions also determine the class of the antibody, known as the isotype. Different isotypes can have different oligomeric states, with immunoglobulin A, or IgA, forming a dimer, IgD, IgE and IgG forming monomers, and IgM 
forming a pentamer. The two heavy and two light chains of an antibody are held together through disulfide bonds within the constant regions. A set of two disulfide bonds connects the two heavy chains in the hinge region, while the heavy and light chains are bound together with a disulfide bond that bridges opposing cysteine residues within each constant region. A second way of classifying the structural regions of antibodies is based on how antibodies can be cleaved by proteolytic enzymes. The enzyme papain cleaves just above the disulfide bonds within the hinge region, leading to a constant region or FC fragment and two antibody binding or FAB fragments. Another proteolytic enzyme, pepsin, cuts just below the disulfide bonds within the hinge region, which gives a single FAB2 fragment, with two arms still connected. Generating these separate antibody fragments in the lab has enabled the function of each region to be determined, while each antibody fragment can be useful for a variety of biological assays. An antibody binds its epitope through the variable regions in the tips of the heavy and light chains. There is an enormous amount of diversity in the variable regions, so that different antibodies can recognise many different target epitopes. Each of these chains contains three complementarity determining regions, or CDRs, located at the tips of each variable domain. Parts leading up to those tips are called the framework region. Most of the diversity between different antibodies is generated within the CDRs. Together, the three CDRs form the epitope binding site and determine the specificity of individual antibodies. So we have gone through the animated video wherein very neatly it is shown a dimer, a monomer, a pentamer. IgA is a dimer, which is I told you in the previous topic one, IgA is helping in mucosal, mucosal immunity, mucosal immunity that is in the lungs and also in the gut. IgA is function. IgG is serum based. Okay. So that is dima. IgA is dima. Okay. Then uh, that's what uh, the polio vaccine and other vaccines are given. So as to prompt more of immuno, uh, what is that called? Mucosal immunity. Mucosal immunity. Okay. The next one is called, we have seen, monomers. IgG is a monomer, IgE is a monomer, that is Ig gamma, Ig epsilon, Ig delta. These three are the monomers. The last one that we have seen is pentam, IgM. So these are the things that we have seen apart from that uh, pepsin and papayan involvement in the in the framing of five shape structure also we have gone through. Let us see now. IgG. IgG typical structure is this. Okay, if any infection comes, IgG is predominant immunoglobulin, predominant immunoglobulin. So even for plasma therapy also, IgG is taken. Okay, so this comes a little bit uh, later. IgM is the one to begin with, IgM appears whenever there is infection. A little bit later, after 5 or 7 days, IgG comes. Okay, this is IgG. It is a major serum immunoglobulin. It constitutes 75% of total immunoglobulin. There are four subclasses found here, IgG1, IgG2, IgG3, IgG4, each having a unique gamma chain. Okay, so that's what it is uh, made into four subclasses, but it comes under one group called, one isotype called IgG. Okay, Main, it is a major immunoglobulin antibody of secondary response. Okay, found both in the serum and the body. Primary response means uh, whenever we get the infection, to begin with, there is IgM. Only maternal immunoglobulin to be transported across placenta. Okay, immunoglobulins are also transported across placenta. That's what the baby, newborn baby, okay, that is being protected with the immunoglobulins. Okay, not only that, it also goes with the mother's milk to the baby. So, uh, participates, it, uh, immunoglobulin G participates in complement fixation and neutralization. These are the basic functions. That is complement fixation. Okay, neutralization. So, as to eliminate the bacteria, uh, so as to eliminate the uh, virus, so as to eliminate the protozoa. These are the two major defense functions complement fixation, agglutination, neutralization, and phagocytosis. 
let us see IgM. IgM is the pentamerase. This is what we have seen in the video also. It is also having a five IgY type of structures are five in this pentamerase. So that's what avidity, avidity. That means it binds to the immunoglobulin five types of the antigens. If the antigen is there, we may not, we may not get infected with one antigen. We'll be having thousands of antigens in us whenever we are infected. We may not be having one COVID-19 virus with us. We'll be having thousands, millions. That's what whenever we go to the doctor with hepatitis B virus infection, SARS says, Dr. SARS says, what is the viral load? So they work with the titer, titers. Okay. So with that they find load. Load means several. So that's what here the IgM is having the chance fab. There are nearly five fabs are there. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, like this. So each of the fab will bind to one antigen. That's what here high avidity. Usually monomer is having more affinity, it is having more avidity. So that's what the term avidity is being used here. It is short lived. That's what in immunoglobulin with our COVID-19 test also, IgM is shown, like IgG is shown. IgM is non-specific, but IgG is specific. Okay, it is pentamerous in structure, predominant in primary immune response. For IgG, we are telling secondary immune response. Here, primary immune response. Earliest antibody to be synthesized by the fetus. It is not transported across the placenta. Okay, so useful in diagnosis of infections like syphilis, rubella, HIV, toxoplasmosis, and COVID-19, etc. Okay, IgA, let us see. IgA is a dimer. It is, uh, I told you, it is in the mucosal immunity, in the lungs and the gut and the oral cavity it is present. Okay, major immunoglobulin in the colostrum, saliva, tears and other body fluids. Occurs in two forms, IgA1 and IgA2. So, this IgA is having one in between, one secretory IgA is always in dimeric form. It is composed of two base chains, A, J chain and the secretory component, J chain and secretary component. As a result, it uh, comes out of the, uh, what is it called, blood serum into the lumen of the gut. So secretary component helps to transport the dimer, this is a dimer, from the submucosa to the mucosal cell surface, mucosal cell surface. Okay, ultimately it is produced with the B cell. IgA is also produced, produced with the B cell. Once it is produced with the B cell, it will be there with the serum only, the blood only. But how does it come to the lumen of the gut? Because of the secretory component. So IgA protects the host through mucosal immunity. So we will be having a lot of bacteria, virus in the gut and also our lung. Lung is said to be ventilation for our system. Through the lung we get good air, through the lung we get the bad air, through the lung we get the infection. That's what Nowadays, for COVID-19, people are advising, keep yourself at distance, maintain distance, social distancing. And again, uh, have mask so that you need not inhale, okay, the, uh, the cough and the sneezes of other persons, virus and all those things. Let us see IgD. IgD is the one which is having almost nil function, you can say, resembles IgD structurally, occurs along with IgM on the surface of the B cell. Usually whenever a B cell is getting matured, B cell will have IgM. That is being followed by IgD as the B cell growth and development and differentiation. This comes there. Okay. Very susceptible to proteolytic attack because the uh, amino acids are made in such a way that it gets digested sooner. So as a result, it does not have major function. Its specific function is not clear. IgD appears on the B cell surface. Please remember, B cell while it is developing, there is immature B cell, pro B cell, pre B cell. Like that, there are several stages. In between, one of uh, soon after IgM comes, IgD appears. That's what here IgD appears on the B cell surface along with IgM. Okay, so B cell, B cell self tolerance, export of self tolerant B cells. So this is what now if you see here B cell. The B cell is having uh, this uh, structures IgM, IgD, IgM and IgD. Here only it comes. Mature B cell exported to the periphery. So that is having IgD. There it doesn't have any function as a receptor. As B cell receptor, as a marker, it appears there. Okay. Just now I have shown you where does IgD appears. 
Now IgE. IgE, I told you, it is there the least concentration of serum. Least concentration of the serum. Why it is least? It is causing allergy. We do not want to have the allergy, either itching or sneezing or lung problem, all those things. So how does the allergy cause Let us see. It is present in very low amount, found on the surface of the mast cells. See now this is the mast cell shown. Mast cell is having IgE epsilon receptors. IgE epsilon receptors. To that receptors, CH3 region of the IgE will get bound. Okay. And chiefly produced in the lung linings and intestinal tract. Responsible for anaphylactic type of hypersensitivity. That is type 1. Anaphylactic. Anaphylactic means sudden, instantaneous, sneezing, cough. Okay. So that's what responsible for anaphylactic type of hypersensitivity. Okay. So that's what now, if you want to open the book after one of the first year books, if you open the second year, the, the book accumulates a lot, lot of dust. So if you open by any chance in the second year, that book as and when you are opening, you sneeze, your eyes burn, you cough, that is called anaphylactic. Okay, so that's what. See how does it cause me the two IgEs are bound by allergen in the diagram. So once it is bound by the allergen, then the mast cell releases histamine. Histamine is vasodilator. Vasodilator, it causes allergy reactions. So as a result, we used to take antihistamine tablets. So that's what IgE is present in low concentration and it is almost said to be unwanted allergen. So diversity among immunoglobulins. This is what Tsutsumu Tanigawa is a noble laureate. This is a Japanese person settled in USA in MIT. He has done this work. So now, uh, just now I told you, if you expose to dengue, we'll be having immunoglobulins against dengue. If you expose to this COVID-19, we'll be having against COVID-19. If you expose to Ebola, we'll be having the immunoglobulins against Ebola. Okay, and again like influenza virus. Okay, so Japanese encephalitis virus. So like this, several of these pathogens. For each of the pathogens, we develop immunoglobulins. Everybody is having doubt. How is that possible? How is that possible? We are having only 30,000 genes, not more than that. But varieties of the pathogens are more, varieties of the antigen is more, each of the antigen is having several of the epitopes. That means we are having to produce the immunoglobulins innumerable numbers, 10 to the power of 11. So many immunoglobulins you can make. How is it possible? That's what through Susumu Tonigawa explained through somatic hypermutations. Somatic, somatic hypermutations. That somatic hypermutations are being done in B cell. Because uh, there is a RAG1, that is rearrangement gene 1, rearrangement gene 2 are there. But that's what the B cell is equipped to make the immunoglobulins, tailored immunoglobulins, tailored immunoglobulins, depending upon the type of the infection. Okay, so there is multiple v, v regions and VJ and VDJ recombination in both light chain and heavy chain. Okay, an individual produces a large number of antibodies to cope up with the vast number of antigens which are present in the pathogens. This antibody diversity is due to the immunoglobulin genes. Let us see. One or only a few genes code for C region, whereas many genes code for the V regions. Okay, many genes. I will let you know the example now. So, he is Susumu Tonigawa, very popular Nobel laureate. And he, is, he has done good amount of work, both computational and in vitro works. So chromosomes showing now you see. Now how many nucleotides do we have? Adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. With these four nucleotides, starting from the virus up to the human beings, we've got millions of genes. Millions of genes. Okay. So like this, how many amino acids we are having? We are, we are having around 21 amino acids, lysine, glutamine, all those things. With 21 amino acids, again we have got millions of proteins. Now if we take up here, the light chain, variable, variable chains. Variable chain is having here 30 variable, 1 to 30. And joining region, 1 to 2, 1 to 5. Joining region are 1 to 4. And constant regions are 1, 2, 4 like. So several combinations. So 30 joints with the first joining region, 30 joints with the second joining region. Like that, this combination goes in such a way that we'll be having innumerable. Okay, so like that, uh, either light chain or kappa, kappa chain. Light chain or kappa. If you take up the kappa chain, here we are having the variable region 1 to variable region 35. 
That means 1 to 35 variable alleles are there. Alleles. Okay. Either one allele B cell may select to fight with COVID-19 or variable 20 allele B cell may select okay, to fight with COVID-19 or variable 25 B cell may select to, to fight the COVID-19. That's what B cell knows. We do not know. Okay, so uh, once in that combination, then J joining region. So the V variable region has to join to a constant region. Again, there is J1 to J5. The J is being selected, that's what happens in the somatic hypermutation happening in B cell, like constant region. So constant region here, gamma, usually IgG is being selected. Okay, this is uh, only one okay, either IgG. IgM, IgD, IgA or IgE and again IgG it is having IgG1, IgG2, IgG3, IgG4 okay so like that it refers. So like this it goes Vj, Vdj recombination. Here again the light chain, light chain, joining region, combination that is constant region, the heca. it has become the light chain. Like that heavy chain if you take up, in heavy chain in between that the diversity zone comes, D. In between V and J, D gene, D gene comes. So like that V, first D and J join, later D, D J joins to V and V D J joins with the constant region. Okay, so like this uh, the heavy chain is being made. So this type of the hypermutation happens only in the somatic cell. That's what B cell is called somatic cell. B cell is not a germ cell. Okay, if I am infected, I get my B cell undergo the somatic mutations. My son may not because he may not have any infection. So in him, in his B cell may not get undergoing hyper somatic mutations. Okay. So these are all because of this various combinations, recombinations that are occurring in the genes, alleles. Okay. We are going to have this type of the mechanism called different types of the immunoglobulins against different antigens. So mechanism for generating antibody diversity is VDJ recombination, somatic hypermutation and class switch. Class switch means from IgG1 to IgG2 or IgG2 IgM or IgE, IgD like class switch takes place. Now let us see in this case here shown variable 1 to variable 500, diversity 1 to diversity 12, joining region 1 to joining region 14 and the constant region. So which combination works? Is it variable 1 or variable 10 or variable 100 or variable 250 or variable 300 or variable 500 to fight against COVID, to fight against Ebola? That's what the B cell decides. And like that diversity region, joining region. As a result, innumerable number of immunoglobulins potential is there with us to prepare. So now the VDJ recombination, DJ recombination here, that is Susun Tunigawa, Tunigawa's article in this shown and again we did the recombination with various uh, regions that we have seen earlier. So which region is it? Uh, is it a constant region? So here, so he has taken one D, DJ, see DJ join now, see DJ join, later, later V join, okay somatic mutations, later class switch, one class switch will join. Okay, now we need the recombination, class switch recombination involved, double stand breaks. So like this, uh, a gene is made specific to the immunoglobulin. So there are five isotypes and their functions are elucidated. Out of the five isotypes, immunoglobulin G is predominant, useful for clinical diagnostics. IgE binds to mast cells and release histamine, particularly IgE gets involved in allergic reactions. It is released in its concentration in the serum. IgM is short-lived. That's what in COVID-19, we have uh, the rapid blood test contain IgM detection and IgG detection. But this is not confirmative. Okay, for confirmation, they are going to RT-PCR. Mucosal, mucosal immunity is mediated by IgA, immunoglobulin A. Immunoglobulin diversity as indicated by, as shown to us by, as deduced by Susumu Tonigawa is detailedly explained. Okay, so let us have study questions for you to do the homework. Give your opinion on the need of diversity of immunoglobulins. Indicate the various isotypes of immunoglobulins and draw the structures and mention their functions. What is the role of IgE, immunoglobulin E? Because it is unwanted. What does it do? Let us see. Particularly system in development. Indicate the somatic recombination of DNA, the generation of immunoglobulin diversity in B cell. Okay.
Thank you, Ananda. Please go through this, and it's quite interesting. The previous topic on immunoglobulin structure and function, and this immunoglobulin uh, types and the diversity, both are the noble art topics. The first one is Porter Nidalman, the second one is Susumu Tuligawa. Get to know in details. Okay, thank you, Ananda.